everybody welcome back to the cabin welcome back to the forest garden I'm exhausted I've been at this for about three weeks now since I started clearing the oh well, at least three weeks I think it was actually still quite a bit of snow on the ground maybe when I started cutting the trees down anyway it's been a while and um, I haven't made on the other channel on the main channel I haven't really put out a, a video except for the first time uh, first day first week that I was clearing the property um, so I've just been working hard on getting this thing cleared and all these beds set up. If you do tune into the other channel, I'd have a two, well basically two weeks of footage then um, showing everything that I did to, to get this garden started and get it going. And up to this point, um, it's been, like I said, been very labor intensive, very challenging. You notice at the beginning of the uh, video, I'm sifting the uh, soil just digging it out and sifting the leaves and stones especially out of it and I just had to stop doing that because it was taking way too much time so I'll, what I'll do probably is top the beds up with a fresh layer of uh, sifted topsoil once I get um, stuff established get some roots this is new to me I've done raised beds in the past but I've never done a hugel culture mound a, a uh, um, I don't know if there's another term for it. It's basically an earthen mound. You'll see these things actually going back thousands of years where probably that's what they were used for is planting. This, I don't know what else to call it. I don't know if there's another term for this kind of earth mound in English, but essentially it, it's just a raised bed, really high raised bed that uh, gets all its nutrients from these rotten logs and rotten material that's put into the bottom of it and layered all the way throughout. So the principle behind it is that um, those um, all this uh, carbon all this matter it's uh, organic matter um, combination of the older stuff and the new stuff decomposes and provides nutrients to the plants but also that it retains moisture as you know it's not easy for me to get water um, for any purpose I do have the stream and the pond and the dug well and all that kind of stuff and collecting rainwater but this garden because it's at the highest point of the property it's going to be watered solely by rainwater not just what falls from the sky but what I collect in rain barrels off the two buildings that I have right here at the garden or will um, anyway labor intensive like I said but let's see if it produces it's, it's kind of weird when you look at the steepness of it and apparently originally they were or the people who do it properly will build this like five to seven feet high and then it slowly shrinks down and you keep adding organic material to the top of it so it stays quite high and it stays quite steep and I'm not sure I mean you can see I kept throwing soil on top and it just kept eroding immediately down so we have heavy rains coming in tomorrow night I think it is and we'll see how much of the soil stays on I'm gonna plant anyway I'll plant the stuff sort of up higher and I put in these vertical sticks so I'll try to hold the soil back so hopefully that works I have a feeling what's going to happen is I'm going to see a bunch of plants germinating at the bottom of the slopes and then I'll have to transplant them back up to the to the sur or to the top. So very interesting. Um, if this was just a short-term garden, if it was only um, you know something temporary or I wasn't staying here, then I probably wouldn't have bothered going through this much effort. I'd just do a low bed, especially because it's so difficult to get uh, enough soil. But um, this will provide hopefully what I plan on doing is perennial type vegetables or self-seeding vegetables so that this thing becomes essentially sort of maintenance free almost producing without much um, input from me at least over the years so it's a long-term bed long-term plan uh, the rest of the beds I think in the middle of the garden I'll just do lower and then start building up them up over time as well as I get organic material so oh yeah it's like falling down the slope just here without uh, without rain um, what I'm planting since it's only the second week of second or third week of April um, just the cool weather vegetables because we still have probably a month maybe even a month and a half before we see our last frost here so I can't put out tender vegetables like tomatoes and peppers and anything that can get killed or will get killed by the frost so that's um, so what it means is that I'm planting now it's got so many birds around me it's so nice um, now I got radish, peas, beets, um, I think I've got carrots there, although this is not great for carrots. Um, 
I'll show you all the, the package of all the things anyway. So those are the things that can germinate and start growing and won't be killed off by the frost. The other thing is I have some, you know, when I disassembled the uh, garden from the old house, as you know, if you watch those videos where I explain why, you'll know, you'll know what happened and why. Um, I had chicken coops there as well, as well as that big garden. So I've got all the fencing that I took down from there and some chicken wire and some other materials and some, uh, uh, what's that called, plexiglass that, um, anyway, that clear plastic sheet that they use for greenhouses. I've got a couple of sheets of that and a couple of cold frame uh, tops that I made years ago probably been well it's probably been eight years but they've been at the cabin for two or three years and I haven't set them up so I'm gonna do that now I'll uh, get a cold frame it's called so that'll protect the vegetables or from the frost at night but also keep them uh, warmer during the day so that they grow a little bit faster so this is gonna be interesting I haven't one thing I did not order with the seeds and I should have is some kind of test kit to test the soil see what it's deficient in I've I don't know if I've ever tested soil for my gardens, which and I've always had successful gardens, but mainly because I've been able to buy the inputs and I was able to get uh, compost uh, from my sister and some farmer friends, so aged to horse manure and stuff. And then I usually had chicken, so I could use the chicken manure for nitrogen. I'm not sure, this stuff is, uh, you know, as I was digging, there's the, just a pretty shallow layer of soil on top of the, uh, you know, mineral soil or the subsoil underneath and even though it looks like a forest you know, creates a lot of organic material and compost with all the leaves that fall every year it's not that much compared to say the prairies and if you do some research on why the prairie soil was so deep apparently I'm not sure what the deepest soils are there but I know seven feet is um, a figure I remember reading about that and that gets built up because when the bison the buffalo in the past would graze these prairie grasses everything basically below ground dies at the same rate it does from the top so if you chopped off that grass then the roots would shorten they would die off to about that same length roughly I don't know exactly the percentage but that's the basic principle so if you take a say a five foot prairie grass and uh, and eat it down to say a foot then there's probably four or five feet of roots underground again don't quote me on that but it's the principle um, the same amount that got eaten off the top would die in the bottom parts of the roots so that root now decomposes and then also in the fall when the grasses go dormant that grass falls to the ground and decomposes so you get twice as much mass as you would get in a forest like this that um, that compost seasonally I'm gonna pull this camera closer. I'm having real issues with my audio, as you've no, probably noticed. It's been, well, right from the beginning with these cameras. So when my Canon uh, camera was stolen and gear was stolen last uh, July, I think it was, July or August, I bought Sony uh, mirrorless cameras and switched to those because they're much cheaper, first of all, and then um, it's kind of the way things are going. So they actually are really good cameras. The problem is the audio doesn't seem to be anywhere near as good and it's really sensitive to moisture so I've had to in this week's video on the other channel put music over a lot of the the uh, scenes because the camera the audio is crackling and it's so annoying and in some cases so loud you can't even hear what I'm saying so um, that's why I'm trying to work it out I do have a Rode mic on top of the camera with a dead cat which muffles the wind but even the wind sound seems to be worse in this camera and you're probably noticing that now. I'm trying to hide behind this mound and I'll continue to kind of use uh, barriers as I'm talking with these cameras. And I've got an external thing too but it just takes so much time to edit when I take an external audio recorder and then put that with this footage. And if I did that it just would take me a day, two days, three days just to edit a long video. Anyway, I do apologize for that so hopefully you can hear me. You know, the wind's hitting that camera right on. Man, oh man. Anyway, that's probably all I'm going to do in this video because the wind is picking up. And uh, like I said, if you 
you are interested in what I'm doing here, go to the other channel and just watch the whole build of this garden and stay tuned. I, I'll update here, but also on the other channel, uh, how this garden is doing, how it's growing and, and how uh, successful it is and what I'm going to need to do to keep it, keep modifying it to make it uh, work for me. I have been wearing a, a lav mic on my collar sometimes, but um, it's kind of awkward. It's a different part for the camera and then I have to hook the mic up and put the receiver on my belt and then it's not convenient to work in. It can just get caught on stuff and then the battery dies and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, I'll try to do that more often just so you can hear me properly. So I'm going to shut it down for that reason and uh, get back to work. So thanks for watching. appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you back here at the cabin next time. Take care.